hey what's going on guys uh, somebody contacted me on the Facebook asking me to do a color grading tutorial about the taken look and um, to tell you the truth I didn't had uh, footage like this to actually do a proper color grading tutorial because a part of the color grading is actually the lighting the the scene the wardrobe and I remembered, I came across a long time ago, this file that you see on your screen. And this file is from the reduser.com or .net, I believe. I'm going to leave a link in the description below. And basically, it's a, it's a file that really, really looks like a taking footage. And a gentleman named Brett contacted me through Facebook asking me if I can do a tutorial about the taking look so here it is Brett thank you so much for inspiring me to do this tutorial um, I'm gonna leave link in the description below that way you guys can download the same footage and play around with so today we're gonna be looking at this file I'm sure a lot of you guys seen this it's a very old footage it's been circulating for probably two or three years online and um, we're going to be matching this shot to this okay and as before it's completely unscripted i just downloaded the file i have no idea what i'm going to do so i'm just going to go completely from scratch okay so let's start our color grading i'm actually going to go into edit and i'm going to trim this slightly a little bit because i don't need to have the, the the file that's not in focus we're just gonna work pretty much in this area okay so as usual I'm gonna go to the source file that I'm gonna be matching our clip I'm gonna create a new node and I'm gonna add false color plugin that way you guys can see where the exposure is and it's visually much easier to work with the false colors rather than with the waveform I'm actually gonna bring this thing for you on the screen just like that so you guys can see okay we'll put it in a corner okay and for those of you who never seen my previous tutorials this is a free plugin for DaVinci Resolve by time and pixels you can download it from their original website I'm gonna provide the link also below and this plugin helps to visualize the exposure rather than looking at this crazy uh, RGB parade. Especially if you're just starting in color grading, you're going to see a lot of false colors in a professional filmmaking. Um, uh, quite a few monitors now allow false color to be used as you shoot. I think Ninja have it, uh, small HD being great monitors, they, they have false colors. Anyways, so this helping me to kind of visualize the exposure better and what i can see based on this picture that we're pretty much working at the bottom midtones and shadows so what i'm gonna do i'm gonna save this file i'm gonna grab the still and i'm gonna come to our file right over here and i already set up our project to the red lock film that way it's going to be easier and the next thing we're going to do I'm actually going to compare our file and let me do let me actually do like this selected clips okay just like that so we can see side by side and what's cool about it we can see exactly where the exposure is just by looking at the RGB parade okay so for now let's come back and really quick let me apply this thing and we're gonna see where our exposure is basically very similar he's short a little bright but it's understandable because his uh wife be <laughs> wife beater i should say is white so it, it, it's normal the lining is very similar that's pretty awesome anyways so let's get started um Today I'm going to do a slightly different route as my normal color grading. We're actually going to be working in individual channels of RGB. And I'm going to show you in the second how we're going to do that. So for this tutorial I'm going to be using a vector scope and RGB. And I'm actually going to make it a little bit bigger. Okay. 
So let's go to our taken file and we can see that this file is dark and pretty saturated. So I'm going to go back to our clip and I'm going to call this saturation. Okay. And I'm just going to increase slightly more saturation. I'm going to use individual channels just like that. And obviously this is a lot. So I'm going to go to the key. And what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to dial it down probably to 400. Just like this. And let me compare before and after. Probably e even more. Just like that is fine. Just a tiny little bit. Okay, and the next note I'm going to do, it's going to be our LUT. I'm going to be using a standard DaVinci 2383 LUT. And I'm going to place this thing at the very end. This is going to be our final LUT, okay? So the next note I'm going to do, I'm going to call this exposure. And in this note, let me go back. This thing is covering too much. I wish there would be a way just to place it separately later for you guys. And in this exposure node, I'm just going to adjust a little bit exposure because our shadow is a little bit too crushed comparing to over here, even though it's dark, but shadows not crushed over here. So I shall do the same just like this. And I'm going to bring down the highlights just like that so let's compare before and after and as you guys can see it's already look actually pretty cinematic so this is going to be our exposure node and the next thing i'm actually going to denoise this image but individually in rgb channels and to do that you have to go to the nodes you have to go to the add splitter combiner node just like that and we have i'm actually gonna rename it for you red green and blue okay so we're gonna do individual noise reduction per channel this is really cool technique uh, a lot of uh this technique being used in a lot of visual effects to get a cleaner key they actually uh, remove the noise individually per channels. It's a way way better technique like this. So I'm gonna go to the noise reduction right over here and I'm gonna dial 2 and 10. Okay, it's gonna be in red. I'm gonna go to the green. I'm gonna dial the same thing 2 and 10. Um, these are my regular numbers obviously it depends on the footage but for, for the sake of tutorial i just want to kind of make it quick i don't want to be wasting too much time trying to figure out the the best combination 2 and 10 been working pretty much like perfect all around obviously whenever you work on a project you want to have a specific number for the noise reduction but 2 and 10 as a default really really good numbers normally if you're going to go more than three in luma your pictures kind of start getting like blurry cheap that's why I like to keep it around two. So I'm gonna do two here, and, okay? And as you can see in the blue channel, there's pretty much very little effect. Anyways, so we're done with that. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna select all that. Actually, I'm gonna select all of these. And I'm gonna combine them, that way they're not gonna be on our way. And if we're gonna zoom in, and I'm gonna do before and after, you can see a significant noise reduction like that. So that's going to be, I'm going to, let's see, can I rename this? Change the, there you go. I'm going to call this NR, noise reduction. All right. So we took care of that. Next, I'm going to convert this into a parallel mixer. And on the parallel mixer, I'm going to actually start building our look. As we can see, uh, Taken is pretty much classic sort of teal and orange. I really like the tone of his skin, it's very nice. And they have a lot of grain, very stylized look. So I shall dial the same. And for the beginning, I'm gonna call this look. Okay, just like that. 
and I probably gonna put side by side so we can see better and I'm gonna be dialing the look in the primary bars right over here I'm gonna turn off Aluma mix and let's see I have both uh, RGB parades on the side so the one on the left this is the taking and this is our shot we're working and obviously later I'm gonna adjust the exposure as well probably I should do local exposure okay just like that I probably should do it right away so something probably actually something like this the way we kinda matching and slightly little spike okay let's check it out before and after okay that looks good obviously it's a different shot so we're not gonna be able to match hundred percent but it shall do for now okay so let's do a interesting teal look by giving it a little green okay and by adding a little blue okay we're getting there let's see okay like that looks like that looks really really good okay uh, I'm gonna sort of have uh, color between the green and the teal because if you guys seen the Taken movie they have a kind of in-between grading so I'm gonna probably keep something like this and now we can do a similar in the shadows okay like that looks very nice let me see probably can add more more teal okay like that looks great so next note I'm gonna do I'm actually gonna start uh, working bringing the skin color back so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna place another node in front it's gonna be our safety node over here just like this let me let me relink just like that uh, come on there we go okay so it's gonna be our clean uh, node that way the right color is gonna be feeding into a parallel mixer okay and this one I'm gonna call skin so this one is skin and I'm gonna go back to the full screen and I'm gonna check it out before and after that looks really really cool and now working on actual skin so I'm gonna go to the secondaries and I'm gonna try to qualify the skin let's see just like this just like that look actually really really good okay like that looks perfect very nice and in this node I'm gonna start bringing back like a normal skin color I personally don't like working um, with the secondaries a lot because really you never get a nice result from it but because taking obviously you know have proper wardrobe proper lighting we really have no choice than working with the secondary to match the look so let's try playing with the midtones kinda like this let me bring the vector scope that way we can see you guys can't see the okay let me do full screen that we can see better okay so we know that the skin tone is supposed to be this line so you see if I'm playing around with it we can see how the skin tone is changing okay so something like this I really like it let's check it out before and after okay I'm gonna create another note over here things start getting slightly complicated we have actually pretty complicated grade okay so this looks almost 
perfect, a little bit red to my taste, and probably, probably like this looks healthier. And I probably gonna take a little bit saturation from it. That way it looks more natural. So let's check it out before and after. Really cool. Okay, so that's gonna be our first step in achieving the look. Second, okay, let me move those things around. You know what I'm gonna do another node combiner because things start getting out of the hand. Okay, so I'll keep it like that. So this one I'm gonna call blacks. Okay, and in this node, I'm gonna fix the black color. Black color always supposed to be black. So I'm gonna go Luma versus Saturation, and I'm gonna do Curve just like that. Let's see. Let's see how it looks. Let's try to make sure that shadows are truly black. Okay, let's check it out. Something, something like this. Okay, something like that works really good. Um, another way you can actually balance the shadows is obviously manually. So let's say if you don't want to do this kind of method, it's a little complicated. Create another one after the LUT and call this one shadows or blacks, whatever. And in the log, let's see what's going to be our range. Our range is going to be about 128. So let's dial 0.128. And we're just going to adjust, as you can see here, manually the bottom, the bottom level. Just like this. So check it out. Before and after. Before and after. Okay. And we're going to drag it down let's see so taken pretty much all the way at the bottom so I'm gonna have a very similar color all the way at the bottom just like that and also I'm gonna go to the bars and we're gonna replicate this right over here just like that okay so let's check it out what we have so far. Okay, not bad. Um, I probably should go back and fix the skin. Let's see, decompose. Okay, and I should probably give it back saturation just a little bit and put it again back on the compound node. Just like that. Another interesting signature of uh, taking color grading is film grain. It looks very stylized. So let's come over here and right at the end we're gonna add um, we're gonna add film grain just like that. Choose camera. I don't want to choose camera. Uh, film color back curve back grain I really like super 16 uh, film grain even though it may be a lot in some cases but just like that and I want to make sure that it's not there's no color saturation okay oh that wasn't that wasn't it Let's see if there's color into this grain. Okay, I don't think so. All right, so right now it looks a little too much grain than I want. So I'm gonna go back to the key and I'm just gonna dial it down. Let's see. Okay, kinda like this. Okay, like that looks good. All right, so we have this from here to here that looks really really cool but you know what something is missing and I probably want to add one more one more node before the LUT and I'm gonna call this 
yellow and I'm actually going to go to the curves and I'm going to add a little bit more yellow just a tiny little bit just like that so let's check it out before and after tiny a little bit too much so let's say something like 700 okay let's see that looks really really good and this one so we're not confused now there's a lot of things going on so this one is going to be lot this one yellow and one more i'm going to do d and b dodging and burning and if you guys haven't seen my lesson on dodging and burning check it out i'm going to put uh the link in the description so you guys know exactly what I'm talking about. I'm going to go to the qualifier, to the Luma, just like that. Let's see. Okay, just like that is good. Okay, to the highlights, we'll make a soft selection. Okay, like that looks good. And I'm actually going to give a slight spike. Just like this so it looks more 3d dimensional so the lighting looks more more believable just like this so let's check it out the whole thing before and after like that looks really really cool let's do a full screen i'm gonna move the scopes on the side so let's see before and after before and after obviously I can fix some areas over here to fix the color but it's pretty much almost done so this is pretty much the the basic look of the taken moving okay and in the next tutorial I'm gonna show you guys how to remove those stuff on his skin the little spills also on his neck and basically a lot of it is a hundred percent lighting you need to light properly if i'm gonna get out of here and if we're gonna look at this image we actually see a lot of spills on his beard uh on his neck and a little bit on his hair but pretty much the if you can minimize that spill the obviously the picture gonna look really really good and probably one more thing I can do um, before I apply it film grain is add a little bit of sharpening. And I want to add sharpen to the midtones. Let's see. Okay, let's check it out before and after just slightly little pop and let me take care of that spill 235 all right perfect so let's see again before and after all right that looks pretty good and i'm gonna do definitely more tutorials on the taking and other popular movies in the future so thank you guys for watching merry christmas and i'll see you probably next week in a few days stay cool take care